Hey guys, Shane McMurray from The Wedding Report. In this episode, I interview James, who is a photographer in the Nashville, Tennessee area. Check it out. James, tell me uh, about your business. Tell me where you're located, what city you're in, um, your website, your Instagram, uh, anything else you want to share about your business. Go ahead. All right. My name is James. I'm lead photographer and owner of Studio Ramo Photography. I am based out of the Nashville, Tennessee area. I've uh, been photographing weddings since 1994, started off in Key West, made my way over to the Nashville later on in life and so forth. I've been here for the last couple of decades. So you can find me on the web at www.studioramophotography.com, Facebook at facebook.com forward slash studio Ramo photography, or Instagram at, at studio underscore Ramo underscore photography. Great. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what goes into the, the work part. Um, so let's say I'm looking for you uh, or looking for a photographer. I stumble across you. Um, you know, what's the process look like uh, when I contact you? What, what is what's happening there? And then tell me what happens after that. A lot of my business focuses around relationships. So the first thing we do is have a chat on the phone, just kind of see how we hit it off as a potential client and vendor. And then set up a consultation to meet with each other face to face. I always try to meet face to face because to me it builds that relationship and confidence and trust in the in the client. Yeah. Uh, after we do the initial consultation, let's say they go ahead and book me, we sign the contract. I always do a contract, and then uh, once that's done, we go in and do. I usually send an email within a day or so, okay. letting them know something what of the timeline that we're going to do for the wedding day. Not necessarily setting their timeline for their wedding, just kind of showing how we operate along with that. I uh, talk about how we do some shots, capture images a couple hours ahead of the wedding, how we work through the wedding flow through the end of the day and, and end up the wedding day itself so they know what to expect from beginning to end. Yeah. Do, do you find that uh, the couples are always wanting to meet in person or do you feel like uh, people are wanting to meet video because video is becoming more popular? These options are available now. What, do, what are you seeing? I haven't had that request yet to do video. So I, I still strive to do as much face-to-face -face as I can, even if I need to travel a little bit to meet you, uh, you know, close to where you're at. If I need you to come to your home or, or a location that's close to you, I can do that just to make sure that I'm taking care of you as the customer. Yeah, because Nashville is a pretty big area, right? So um... it is a pretty big area. There's a lot of ground to cover when you're around here, especially the middle of Tennessee, you know, expands out several counties yeah. and, you know, around Nashville itself. So yeah. It, it takes a little bit. I had one wedding a few years ago that uh, was probably about an hour away, and I was going back and forth quite a bit. Yeah, so, yeah. But it was worth it because that was probably the best, one of the best relationships I had with a client in a long time. That's awesome. Yeah, I hear this a lot about like uh, the relationship part um, and the connection. Do you feel like that's probably the most important thing? Like, if there's a connection between you and you meet, you go, yeah, you know what? I think we can work together. Oh, I definitely agree that relationship is the most key thing in any, uh, especially wedding photography, because of the fact that, you know, you spend so much time with the client throughout the wedding day, you want to make sure that you're getting along. Uh, it's one of the reasons I do both a engagement and a bridal shoot, so that it gives me more time with that client in front of the camera. They kind of know how to operate. I know how they operate. We know how we interact with each other. And just on the day of the wedding makes it a lot more comfort, comfortable for them to work with me on the day of the wedding as well. It just makes everything go a little more smoothly. Yeah, yeah. Do you, um, uh, you know, you said you send them a timeline, but do you do you spend time like um, trying to get to know know more about what they're interested in, or do you just like uh, do you do that at the at the interview when you guys are meeting together, kind of get all that together and then send them the thing, or do you ha actually have to do more work afterwards to kind of like get to know them and do more stuff? Yeah, I get all that taken care of in the interview process. I ask a lot of questions. Okay. And so we get, you know, kind of find out what they're looking for in their wedding photography, what kind of styles they've looked at, what kind of boards they've looked at on Pinterest, see what interests them and so forth. And then along with that, I do some more research on my own based on once I know what the wedding venue and, and other locations are and the other vendors. Mm -hmm. uh, I go out and scout wedding venues. I make a big habit of going out and scouting wedding venues on a regular basis anyway. Yeah. But once I know what their venue is, I can 
kind of work a little more closely with what they're looking for along with their venue mm -hmm. and kind of scout out, you know, some good places to shoot and so forth to capture those That's images cool. they're looking for. Yeah, because they don't really know, right? They, they just book the venue and they go like, I, I'm going to go there. But, you know, you go out and look at the venue and say, you know, I think we should do some photo shoots over here. Like the sun's right or it's perfect right. or this or that, right? There's so many things, particularly light, right, in photography. There's a lot of things that these couples don't really know about when it comes to venues. Matter of fact, I think one of the videos recently talked about that too. And uh, so that makes it key for me going out to meet with the venue themselves as well. Because there are times, it doesn't happen very often, but there are times that the venue will tell you that there is no flash allowed during the ceremony. And really? so that makes a big difference when you have to prepare for what your lighting looks like and how, what you may be able to capture and not capture as well. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of plan ahead for that. A lot of times the, the client didn't even know that they couldn't have flash photography in the, during the wedding ceremony itself. Wow. But I have found in all but one instance of that, that building a relationship with the venue gives you some leeway that you can say, okay, what can we do? If, if we do it this way, can that work? Or do it that way, will that work? And yeah. still abide by the rules that you've set for everybody. Yeah. What, what's the reason that they do that for no, no flash? Never been asked that question. A lot of times the officiants think that it's distraction. Okay. That flash going off is distracting everyone is taken away from the couple and, and the wedding itself. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've found one of the best ways to handle that is to be more off to the side. So if I can get off to the side of the couple uh, when I'm photographing up front, or, you know, do as much as I can to keep the flash from interacting with the uh, guest itself, that makes a lot of difference. Yeah. And then, then you probably have to deal with, okay, well, if we can't do flash, then, you know, you have to set up lighting and stuff around the help. Either set up lighting or open the camera settings more so that you can allow more light into the camera yeah. or something yeah. of that nature. It's, and it's part of the planning that you put, go into that because if you did, you walked in without doing that, you'd be a lot of surprises on the day of the wedding. Right. <laughs> you've probably right done this over the years, right? Like, I mean, like. I'm sure there's been a few shoots you're like, oh man, I forgot about the lighting or, you know, or I didn't know that I had to deal with that. And when you're getting started, right? That's right. And of course, then after the wedding, after everything is said and done, there's probably about, you know, 30, 40 hours of editing time that goes into all the images. I have built a process over the years. I started off with film. And when I was film, I would have to uh, budget for the number of rolls of film that I shot during an event. Right. And so I wouldn't end up with too many images. I wanted to make sure I had as, you know, the quality of images that I needed instead of the quantity. And I've always carried that into the digital realm as well so that I may shoot for maybe 500 at the most images and it, because it takes a lot of time to edit those down and call yeah. them out and so forth to get the quality that you want. So, you know, I spend quite a bit of hours in editing to get that done. Make sure I've got, have, um, really gotten everything just the way I want it for the client to see. Yeah. How long is that? You got 30 or 40 hours in. How long before you send them like a first look or something like that? I usually give them three to four weeks as a guesstimation, but always strive to do it within two. Yeah. I've yeah. always done the over promise under or under promise over deliver method. Yeah. I always want to surprise them ahead of time. Hey, your images are ready. Let's go look at them. Yeah. That's smart. more yeah. excited. Um, I noticed a couple of photographers actually try to pull something together. Like one I interviewed, pull, tried to pull something together during the ben, during the actual day of, uh, which I thought was a little, I mean, it's awesome that he can do that, but I thought it was like, wow, man, how do you even have time? And then um, another one said that she puts tries to put something together either the night of or the day after and send it over to him. Have, do you have anybody to ask for that or? Usually it didn't ask for, but it's an extra little thing that we can do as photographers to kind of wow the client more. Mm -hmm. So that, for example, you put a few images that you've been working on that first day or two and give them a sneak peek. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of people that will, and I've been reading about it and hearing about it more and more, that will take and put all those images they capture that day, go ahead and bring the laptop with them and set it up so they can display at the reception and kind of give a uh, slideshow of some of those images right there on the spot. Yeah, yeah, I've not gotten to that point, but uh, I've been, like I said, seeing it and reading about it more and more. Yeah, sounds like something that might be a good opportunity if you can get to it, right? I mean, it seems like, you know, you don't want to miss a shot, but you want to be able to provide this, that level of service. But yeah, exactly. Crazy. It shouldn't be that difficult of a thing to do because I'm already have my laptop there because I'm backing up my SD cards 
on the spot to make sure that we have a backup so that nothing is lost. Mm -hmm. And so it would take just a assistant to put that together real quick to get sure. ready to show. Yeah, good, good, good call. Um, what advice would you have for couples that are looking for a photographer today? The first thing I would advise definitely is start with a budget. I'm a big budget person, and so that's one of the weddings we talked, or one of the videos we I looked at as well from the, what you've done already. And the fact that, you know, sometimes those costs get away from you if you don't plan for it. Yep. So if you said the amount that you want as your total amount that you're willing to spend on this wedding, then it kind of helps you break it down. There's a lot of resources on the web, the knot and so forth, that have these different categorized budgets out there that you can download and assign different amounts based upon your total amount. Matter of fact, I believe it was the one on the knot that I came across that gave you percentages that are on normal for each of those categories so that you can designate, okay, if I'm doing a $25,000 wedding, for example, and 10 to 12% is spent on photography and all the things that come with it, then I'm going to be looking at an investment of about $25, $2,600 on photography. And that kind of gives you an idea as a bride or a groom of what you're looking for when you're shopping vendors to see what's within your range, what's not in your range. You know, there's still that leeway that you have to splurging in one area more than others. If that's what your key focus in, you always want to pick out two or three. And so that you kind of know where your money is going. Yeah. yeah manage right. your money so your money doesn't manage you. <laughs> right. That's right. exactly right. So yeah. that's the key thing. And then the other thing is you want to make sure that you give yourself time to enjoy the process. Don't sweat the small stuff. Every wedding is an adventure in itself. There's always new things that come out to learn and so forth, but to give yourself the time to kind of work through the process and enjoy it along the way. You're still working together and just to enjoy the adventure. Yeah, that's great because uh, I think a lot of times people are so focused on trying to plan and make sure the event is whatever and they forget about enjoying the process going through it. That's exactly right. Yeah, uh, so let's uh, switch gears a little bit. Let's talk about the business side. Um, what would you say is working well for you right now, James? I'd say the working well is the networking that I do with other vendors and so forth. Uh, I strive a lot to spend time networking with vendors to build relationships with them. Uh, not only because it was recently said that, you know, brides trust in the relationships that vendors have with one another, but the better relationship you have with those vendors, the, make, the more easy or easier, I'm not saying it right, <laughs> that things, the more smoother things go on the wedding day because you already understand each other, you know already know we, how each other operates and so forth mm -hmm. it just makes a, little, a lot more smooth path yeah but, uh, so those relationships are really key yeah i i actually uh you know that's i've heard that from a lot of people is the relate building relationships with other vendors are, are really key because you are you're a team you're trying to you're trying i mean exactly even though you're right. separate businesses you're a team trying to provide the best day you can for that couple that's getting married so um, every, you know, when things come up, everybody jumps in, tries to help out and make things happen. That's a teamwork, right? You know, it's, so it's really key. I think that, that, uh, you have good relationships with the people you're working with at those events. That's right. As they say, teamwork makes the dream work. Yeah. What else would you say is working well for you right now? Beyond that, I say my process flows that I've built over the years have worked out well. It helps save time during the wedding day and so forth. You know, I've had a few years to kind of work on those. Shamely, they're not documented yet, but I know what I'm doing with them. Uh, it helps save time, make things go a little more smoothly on the wedding day because we're not wasting time fumbling around trying to figure out what we're doing and so forth. So I've got a set pattern of the way I operate whenever, on every wedding day. Mm -hmm. Go in and spend a couple hours ahead of the wedding uh, ceremony time, capturing the images of the bride and the groom and their families together each uh, with each of their families respectively. Yeah. And so that cuts down on the time after the ceremony between that and the reception. And then basically what we have left after the reception is getting either the entire, the whole group family shot and the uh, attendance yep. and down to the bride and groom itself. And so it really shortens down that time between the two events there. Mm -hmm. And so that's worked out really well. It just keeps things nice and smooth, flowing well and so forth. Yeah. So how did you figure that out though? I mean, uh, I mean, any large company is always looking at their process to figure out how do they, you know, how do they deliver something from beginning to end and make that streamlined, right? That's just, that's just how big companies operate. So what do you think was the thing that you said to yourself, like, man, I really need to streamline this a little bit and figure out this process so I can, I can continue to do this easier. What was the driving force? 
Well, it started out with reading a lot of books back in 94, when, before I did my first wedding, but you know, a lot of trial and error and things like that. I've always worked off of a picture checklist, uh, even though I've got a lot of it committed here in memory now. Sure. But uh, so those are categorized and so forth. It helps you break that down and you can spend time and just with experience over the years, just putting it into practice yeah. makes it a lot more, you know, a lot better. Yeah, well, it also streamlines your ability to do more work, right? Because, um, I, I mean, as a creative person, when you're discovering stuff, even working in the data field, when you're doing discovery about data, um, you spend a lot of time just looking at this and looking at this possibility and, oh, well, what about that? And then you, then you find something that you might see as a correlation between it, and then you go, okay, well, now I have that pattern. And once I have the pattern, then I can actually feed stuff into the pattern and it makes it so much more convenient to be able to get stuff out of it quicker. So, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's, that's really that's one cool. of the key things, you know, for going out and scouting out the wedding venue too, before you get there on the wedding day, because if you already have an idea of the locations that you want to capture images in and kind of start thinking about some of the things that you're going to capture with that location, mm -hmm. then you're just working your way around the circle in many cases and going boom, boom, boom to get things done. Yeah. And it makes a lot less stress on the wedding day, that's for sure. Yeah. How much time would you say you spend prior to the actual wedding day preparing for someone's wedding? I would say probably eight to 12 hours between, you know, connecting with vendors, doing the scouting and any traveling that we do and, you know, all the consultations with the client as well. Yeah. Uh, and then just doing some thinking about it and putting that down on the, on the checklist that I was talking about. Yep. Uh, just kind of brainstorming basically. So yeah. I'd say eight to 12 hours roughly. Yeah. So you got 40 or 50 hours in the, pretty much each event, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, that's, that's good. Uh, so what would you say um, are your biggest challenges right now? Biggest challenge by far is time. Not necessarily time on the wedding day, but I was, I still work for the man. So I work a full-time job on top of doing wedding photography as well. And so what that does is with that in this area of Nashville, that there are long commutes, traffic and so forth, by the time I get home from work, there's little time to work on marketing and pre-planning and stuff like that. So I have to really carve out some time to do some of those things yeah. with focus on any of the weddings that we have coming up. So, but there's a little less, little time for planning on sales and marketing, yeah. which that leads to the second point of what's not really working well is since there's not a lot of marketing effort, yeah. my target client doesn't really know that I exist. So it makes it more difficult to reach out and grab that target client and get them lined up to book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, time is always a challenge, um, and particularly if you're if you know you're working another gig and this is a side hustle kind of deal. Uh, I know, man, it can be it can be extremely challenging to try to find time to carve out to dedicate to you know growing your business, getting it to the next level, doing all those things. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. That's right. So you got to spend time working on your business, not just in your business. That's but at right. the same time, you also have to make sure that you balance that with your family time as well. Yeah. Well, yeah, there you go. Right. If you got family, you got to spend time with family and stuff like that. So yeah, that's always a challenge. Oh yes. Um, so if you had some advice to give to new uh, people coming into the space, what advice would you give them? The key thing for sure is to learn how to network again, because of those relationships that we talked about earlier. And that way it gives you the ability to know more about who you're working with and you just make sure that you invest the time in building those relationships. And then to realize that not all business owners in this industry, like myself, are nine to five type businesses. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of, I've, in the past, I've met with many vendors after hours uh, in their homes or whatever, where they run their, operate their business from. Yeah. Yeah. That's good advice. Thanks. Um, last question, James. Uh, what's your best or worst wedding or business story? It could be either one. Best or worst? Well, let me tell you, the first thing is every, like I said, every wedding is an adventure. It really is. I would have to go back to the first wedding that I did back in 94 as probably the best one because that's where I picked up and learned the most. I got my feet wet and I really was kind of scared about doing that first wedding. I had no thoughts of doing wedding photography at all. I was just a hobby photographer at the time and really got talked into it by a friend of mine who was hit up first by the couple and didn't have time or interest in doing that particular uh, event. Mm -hmm. And so after landing that event, that's when I started buying the books and reading as much as I could. I was a bookworm more than I am now. And uh, 
Joe on that day of the wedding, there were so many things I learned, so many things that were going on, so many things that went well and things, lessons learned and so forth. And I was just bit by what I call the wedding bug. And it's ever since been loving weddings since then. Yeah. So, yeah. But, so I look back fond memories on that because it was probably the, the most uh, exciting one that I've done. I mean, I've said, had some great weddings. I had one not too long ago that had uh, have a large lake here in the Nashville area. This couple had houseboats with their friends. They had four of them tied together. We ran out in the middle of the lake in, the, in July. Wow. And had a ceremony on, on the top deck of these four boats tied together. And then they spread the reception all over the lower decks. That's pretty yeah, cool. So that, was, that was a lot of fun, too. Different, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, that's awesome. Um, great stuff. So how many weddings have you done since 94? Not as many as I want to. <laughs> a couple yeah. hundred, maybe, if the most. Yeah. Like I said, yeah. again, because of the time, getting out marketing and so forth. Yeah. It but, takes uh, time. Yeah. But by the same token, we were talking about best and worst. You know, I'd say the worst, again, it was a lesson learned. We were scouting out a wedding on the uh, rehearsal night and was getting my ideas together for where I needed to stand to do this. Now, we're on a platform, a large hotel down in Orlando. And so I'm walking around the platform, kind of gauging where the couple's going to be, where the efficient's going to be, and so forth, and where I wanted to stand amongst the different plants and so forth that was going to be up there, too. I work my way further and further towards the edge of it, and I step onto what I thought was a solid wall. I put my full weight on it, and the foot goes down. Boom. Slammed into the floor below, scratched up my ankle and my shin oh. and so forth, and wound up having to do that whole wedding with a swollen ankle about that big. Oh, that was man. no fun. So yeah. I learned to watch my step. Yeah. <laughs> but again, that same wedding, it was also the lesson learned. That was where my flash chose to die for the first time. I had oh. not learned the lesson of having backup equipment. And mm -hmm. that was the first thing that I learned that when Flash died. Luckily, the brother of the bride was really sweet. She handed me her camera and said, here's my camera. So I use it to finish out the, the wedding and so forth, produce what I needed to produce. And it went right out after that wedding was done. I got a second Flash. Yeah, yeah. And then I have never been without a second piece of equipment for anything. Yeah, it's, it's funny. Yeah, because we always learn those lessons, right? Like something happens and it goes bad and then... We, we, we go, oh, crap, I should have did that. And then, you know, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, totally. That's some of the hardest life lessons to learn. Yeah, yeah. But the ones that stick with you the most. That's right. Right, for sure. James, thanks so much for doing this. appreciate your time. And uh, have You're a very welcome. I appreciate it as well. All right. Hey, thanks for checking out this episode. I hope that you found it helpful. Please share it with other people. Also, if you're getting married or you work in the wedding industry, I would love to interview and share your information with other people. Send me a text, 520-399-8580, or shoot me an email at letschat at wedding.report.